Hello, my name is Mr. Spamble, and today I'm here with the main man, Bradder Boy. And in this video, as you read in the title, Brad's going to be explaining permissions. Now, this is just a complete foreign language to me. I've got no clue what he's on about, but I'm going to awkwardly sit here, and you got to stay tuned to the very end. And if you're not already subscribed, what are you messing up? Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button, and let's go ahead and get started. Right, so of course, before we get into how permissions work, you're gonna need a server. So if you don't already have a server, make sure to watch the previous tutorial, read the comments down there as well because some things did change and get your server installed. Or if you're lazy like me and just wanna get ahead of it, you can just get a server from pinehosting.com and use code Mr. Spamble for 40% off your first month. Isn't that brilliant, Mr. Spamble? Oh yes, of course, yeah, go down below. Check out Pine Hosting, you gotta do it. Yep, and it will auto set up everything for you so you can get right to the fun stuff. <laughs> right, so once you got your server set up, you will be greeted with the files just like this. You're going to want to navigate to your service folder, whatever you've called your server, so test server in this case, and then rocket, and then look for the permissions.config.xml. I'm pretty sure everyone watching this video does know where that is. That's why you probably Googled this video. So once you've opened up your permissions folder, this is where things get quite confusing. As Famal said, it is like a foreign language. But once you learn how permissions work, it carries over to every game you want to host servers on that allow for like permissions and modding the game. So it'll work for Rust, it'll work for Minecraft, whatever your favorite game is, probably even Roblox, who knows. Once you understand the basics of how permission works, then it's pretty simple and you can just work with any game. So to start off, we have the first two lines in the unturned permissions folder. You can straight up ignore those because they mean nothing. It gets important from line three downwards. So line three is default group. Pretty much what this means is this is the default group that anyone that joins your server gets. So every single person that ever connects to your server, from Bobby to Mr. Spammel to whoever whoever plays on your server, they <laughs> yes, Mr. Spammel will play on your server if you get a Pine hosting server. Well, I that's, that's oh, no, we okay. can't we can't right. hold you responsible for that. So anyone that plays on your server gets added to default group. So pretty much as soon as they join, it will check here what groups default, and then it will just add them to the ID that matches that. Leave it default. Don't even confuse yourself. If you want to change it to Bobby's good. You can, but then you have to make a group with the same ID as Bobby's good, which is just overly complicated. So it's better to just leave it as default. Right, moving on to the next bit, we have groups. Pretty much XML works in a way where everything you open has to be closed. So as you can see here, this is called the alligator mouth. I don't actually know what it's called. The less than and greater than signs, that's what it is. Those around groups and then that with a forward slash in it pretty much means that that's where it opens and that's where it closes. And if you're using Notepad++, it does it for you. Everywhere you click, it shows you where things open and close. So I recommend getting Notepad++. Anyway, this pretty much just says that these are the groups and within the groups is every group. There's the default group and the VIP group, as you can see like that. So I'll work on default group first. I'll explain how that all works and then we'll move on to making more groups and a few other advanced things. So we've got default group here and then within that is all the information is what I'd like to call it. I like to imagine permissions as like houses or like boxes and you put people in those boxes and if they're in a certain box, they have access to certain like commands or they in a blue box, red box, it's, it's totally up to you kind of thing. Just imagine it like houses kind of thing, a way of separating people. So we have ID default, ID isn't really used any Anywhere. Um, it's just a nice identifier for you to know um, and it helps when you're adding people to a group you have to do slash p add their name and then the group generally just keep it what it's called if you have a group called police just call it police keep it lowercase it's just like the format that people seem to follow make sure it's unique of course otherwise if you have two groups called police it's going to confuse your poor server. Next up, we have display name, which in all honesty, I don't actually know where it's used at all. I think it's used in some cases when it displays the groups and some plugins do use it, but generally just call the display name a prettier version of whatever your ID is. So or if your ID is VIP, your display name should also be VIP, but like in caps, or if you have police, just call it like law enforcement. I don't know. It's up to you, whatever you want to call it, but this is like a nicer place where you can make it look pretty because players can see it. Some plugins do display it. So don't call it anything stupid, of course. Next up, we have prefix and suffix. This is probably one of the most exciting bits because you can add little prefixes and suffixes. For those of you that don't know, prefix is before and suffix is after. So you'll see on servers, some people have like a tag in front of their name and after their name. Sometimes that's for donators or their job or everything. So this is where you'll need to add all of that information. To add a prefix, I'll show you how to do that. But first, anytime in, in XML, anytime you don't want to have any information, so, this has no information. What you do is you add a space and then a forward slash. So let's say on display name, I wanted to not have any display name. I would remove that, I'd add a space and then a forward slash. And then that means that there is no display name. So in this case, there is no prefix and there is no suffix. 
but we obviously want to change that. So what we do is we remove the forward slash, we remove the space, and then we type our prefix. So I'm gonna type Mr. Spammel good as my prefix. And then, oh yeah. Yes, very good. And then you always end it off with a greater than sign and then a forward slash and then prefix and then a less than sign. I don't know, I probably got those two mixed up, but who cares? So that pretty much means now the data within these two things, as you can see, Notepad highlights it, is what the prefix will be. One important thing to remember with prefix and suffix is that it doesn't automatically space it out for you. One other thing to note is that these square brackets, you don't actually need them. They can be curly brackets, they can be normal brackets, whatever you want to. And for suffix, it is literally exactly the same as prefix. So we just remove this, add whatever we want. So I'm going to add uh, pinehosting.com and then slash suffix. And there we go. That will be their suffix. Obviously the suffix goes at the end of the name. So if you're gonna add your space, you would add it at the beginning of the suffix. So it would be Mr. Spammel Good, space, Bobby, space, Pine Hosting. Next up, we have color, pretty self-explanatory. That's their color. So you can change the color of their text by changing this. It generally supports most basic colors like red you can put or yellow. But if you do wanna get advanced and fine tune your colors, you can use a hex color code picker, which I'll show you one of those now. So any hex color code picker will work. I've just found this random one here. Now you can put the color there, obviously without the hashtag in front, and that's it. Now that person's gonna have a magenta color. So everyone in default, which is everyone, will have a magenta color on their name. Right, next up we have members. I will get to members a bit more in the VIP group because default doesn't actually have any members because everyone gets added to the default group. There's no point in putting every single 64 ID that's in that group, otherwise it would be massive. If you had like a thousand people joining your server, it would get too big. So this is just left empty, like I spoke about before with the empty thing. Next up, we have priority. Priority is a bit confusing because it works kind of opposite to how I would think it would work. Pretty much the lower the number, the higher their priority is. Now, priority doesn't affect much, but it does affect things like their prefix and suffix. So if I'm in two groups, for example, say I'm in VIP and MVP, like donator ranks, you would want MVP, I'm assuming MVP is the higher rank on your server. If, if MVP was a higher rank, you'd want them to have a lower priority number because then the player, if they're in both the groups, they would take the prefix and suffix and the color of MVP and not VIP. The lower the number is, the higher the rank is. So owner, admin, and moderator could be priority one, two, and three, and default is like priority 100. Right, now we're onto permissions, which is the whole point of the video, I guess. So for the people that haven't clocked onto what this is, pretty much permissions are permissions, you're giving someone permission to do something. It's like when someone asks you, can I do this? You say, yes, you have permission. So to subscribe. Yes. Can, and I, click the bell can, down I, below. can I subscribe to your channel, Mr. Spammel? No. So that's how it works kind of thing. So if you want to, maybe there's a plugin that you have that has the permission subscribe, for example. So you would give them permission subscribe and now they can subscribe to Mr. Spammel. So that's how it works kind of thing. So every single plugin on Unturned has to have a permission. So that means it can get a bit difficult um, some of the plugins don't list what their permissions are and a lot of the websites have gone down now. So generally it's just good to ask people on a Discord, even comments and I can reply with some permissions that I know. Or generally the plugins have the same permission as whatever the command name is. So if the command name is TP, the permission is probably TP in most cases, 99% of the time it is. For example, if we want a default group, which is everyone, to be able to TP to anyone across the map, obviously you don't want to do that, but if you wanted them to have TP, you would just add the permission TP and there we go. Now, anyone on my server can TP to any location or anyone. One other thing on these permission lines, you can see here it says permission cooldown equals zero. This is the cooldown of the permission. So every time they run the command, they will get an cooldown for however many seconds until they can run it again. Zero means there's no cooldown at all, so they can just spam it as much as they want. But let's say we wanted to give TP a 60 second cooldown. We would just put 60. Moving on to the other groups, as I did before, I made that MVP group. So I'm just gonna neaten this one up so I can show you a bit better how it looks. The display name, we'll call it MVP. Right, so I've gone through and changed the perms a little bit, so it shows a bit better when we test it in game. But a few final things to go through is Every group that isn't the default group has a parent group. Generally, just leave this as default. What this means is if they're in that group, it's gonna inherit the perms from the parent group. So you could have it so if they're in MVP, it would inherit the perms from VIP and VIP inherits the perms from default. It's really complex to do it that way. Just leave it as everything facing default. That means that whatever perms they have in the default group, which is P, TP, Rocket or whatever, they will have in the MVP group. This also means that even if they're not in the DFL group, which of course everyone is, but if they're not, they would still have access to those commands. So for example, if I change this to VIP, 
and I gave these guys the permission to TPA, for example, that means MVP would have access to I, heal, V, and TPA as well. But as I said, just leave it as default. You really don't need to overcomplicate it. This also means that you can have all your general perms here that all the normal pleb players have access to, and then all your donator perms just sit here, so you don't have to copy and paste perms a hundred times. And that's pretty much it when it comes to perms. There's the members bit up here, which I haven't spoken about much. If you do want to manually add members and remove them, you can. It's pretty simple. You just delete the line if you don't want them or add the line if you do. And you can obviously add as many as you want. Just keep spamming them down. So I'm going to save this permissions file. Remember, control S, otherwise it doesn't work. Then I'm going to head in game, show you a few basic commands. So I've just hopped in game. And as you can see, I typed in chat to test and our wonderful looking perms have worked. It is magenta, like the color I chose. Mr. Spam good with horrible brackets and pinehosting.com all around my name. Obviously, my normal name is just Brad in game. And there we go. This is obviously what we added. Now, I should have access to TP theoretically. So if I go back in game and I did slash TP Seattle, it teleports me to Seattle. And now if I do TP Tacoma, it should fail because we added a one hour cooldown. There we go. I have to wait 3,593 seconds. Now what we're going to do is I'll show you how to add me to another rank. So now let's say I'm a donator, for example, VIP ranks over here. So I can add myself by simply typing P add and then either the player 64 ID if they're not on or their name, which I'm on. So I'm going to type P add Brad and we'll add me to VIP. Brad was added to VIP. This means my color should change. Prefix and suffixes by default, unless you get a plugin, don't automatically change. You'd have to get the person to leave the server and rejoin. So if I type, I should have, yes, there we go, a nice new color, but my prefix and suffix is still the same. It asks me to reload the file. If that pops up, always just click yes. Um, and it reloaded and added my 64 ID. That's my ID there. And if we remove myself, so if I go back to console, P remove Brad VIP, and click back, please reload the file. Yes, and there we go, I'm gone. Easy and simple, just like that. Right, so that's pretty much everything with permissions. The one final thing I'm gonna show you is how to automatically reload them. So say for example, I was working on my MVP permissions and I thought that slash I was a bit too overpowered. I can just remove it, save the file, and then once the file's saved, obviously that's not gonna automatically apply. So players on the server will still be able to spawn things in until I reload the permissions file. So once I've removed it, I just gotta to head to console, type p reload permissions reloaded if i click back it should ask me to refresh it won't change anything make sure that slash i is gone which now means technically i shouldn't be able to spawn in anything so if i try to spawn in a drum you do not have permission to execute this command and that is pretty much everything to do with permissions i know it might be a lot to take in there is obviously timestamps in the description so just click wherever you want to go if you did like the video and it did help you please leave like and subscribe to Mr. Spammel. And if you need any more help, just leave a comment. And if you need one-on-one -on -one help, you can grab a server at Pine Hosting and we can DM each other and I'll help you set up your perms and everything.